free body diagrams of supports for 3D4 systems. Suppose we have this support structure and it's connected to something else on the bottom, but we're not interested in that right now. And it supports a cable going in this direction. To draw the free body diagram of this structure, we have the following. So cables can only experience tension, so it'll pull on this structure. So this consists of one unknown, which is that force. Okay, number two, suppose we have some kind of uh, smooth surface, let's say it's a ground, we have, we have the structure that is smooth on one end, like that. So the free body diagram of this particular structure would be as follows. The reaction force, once you remove the ground, is always perpendicular to that support ground. So I'll just draw a dotted line to represent my ground, and I'm going to draw a perpendicular force to that ground. Again, we only have one unknown, which is that force, force F. Number three, suppose we have a roller like this and we roll it on a flat surface. So I can depict that as follows. So I'll have my roller, my pen, let's add some angle like that. So the free body diagram for that would be So again, it would be perpendicular to the ground. So that's my free body diagram. I could have also drawn just the free body diagram of this handle. Like that. And we will still have the reaction force going upwards and through that pin joint. We still have one unknown. Suppose we have a ball and socket set up. So it'll look something like this. That's fixed to the ground. And there's a ball right there. And the ball is attached to some kind of, let's say, a handle. The free body diagram for that is the ball and the handle. The socket prevents this handle from translating in all three directions, X, Y, and Z. So if I had chosen this to be my coordinate system, where this is X, Y, and Z, I would have reaction forces in those directions because the socket prevents motions in those directions. 
So I would have fx, fy, fz. The socket doesn't provide any resistance to rotation about the x, y, or z directions. Therefore, we have no moment in those directions. So I'm going to indicate that by saying moment about the y-axis is 0, moment about the z-axis is 0, and moment about the x-axis is also 0. Number five, we have a single smooth pin and pins right there. It supports a rod like that. The free body diagram for that rod would look something like this. So using the coordinate system as We'll have this as X, Y, and Z. The single smooth pin support prevents translation of the rod in all directions, X, Y, and Z. Therefore, there will be reaction forces in those directions. So we'll have reaction force that way in the Y and in the Z. <clears throat> the single smooth pin assembly prevents this rod from rotating about the Y axis as well as the Z axis. It doesn't prevent rotation about the X axis. So we will have reaction moments in those directions. So we'll have moment about the Y axis moment about the z-axis and there will be no moment about the x-axis but I'm going to indicate that and set the moment about the x-axis is equal to zero. Next we have a, a single hinge. So I have an example of that hinge. I've drawn an x-axis in that direction. The y and the z will be coming up towards you. This hinge assembly, because it's fixed to this box, resists translation in the x direction as well as the y and also the z. Therefore, there will be reaction forces in each of those directions. So we draw the hinge, and let's say it looks something like this. And we'll assign this to be the y-axis, the x-axis, and the z-axis, and we will have reaction forces in each of those directions. In terms of reaction moments, there will be no reaction moment about the y-axis because it can rotate freely about that axis. But if I were to push in this direction, in the y direction, it would resist rotation about the x-axis. So therefore, we'll have a reaction moment about the x-axis. If I were to uh, twist it, applying this twist, it will resist that twisting moment, so we will have a reaction moment about the z-axis.
So we'll have a reaction moment about the x-axis, about the z-axis, and we will not have any reaction moment in the y-axis or about the y-axis, and I'll set that equal to zero. Let's take a look at a double hinge assembly. And we can use the same box. So here I have the back of that box and those two hinges allows the box to open and close freely. So I'll just draw the two hinges here. And I'll assign the axes to be as such. This is my Y, X, and Z. Those hinges prevent translation in each of those directions, X, Y, and Z. So if I call this point A, call this point B, I'll have a reaction force in the X at A, Y at A, and also Z at A. Same thing for hinge B, I'll have a reaction force in the X, reaction force at B in the Y direction, and also the reaction force in the Z direction. When we use two hinges like this, the force reactions developed by the pins are sufficient for equilibrium because they prevent the box from rotating about each of the coordinate axes. So no couple moments are going to be present at each of those pins. So, in other words, there will be no couple moment about here. That would equal to zero. This couple moment moment about the y at a is also equal to zero. And the moment about the z axis at a is also equal to zero. And that's also true for the moment about the x-axis at B, that will equal to zero. Moment about the y-axis at B, that will also equal to zero. And moment about the z-axis at B, that will equal to zero. Number eight, we have this fixed support, meaning there might be a, a rod that's maybe even welded to a surface. The free body diagram for that particular rod, if we remove the support, would look something like this, where we have the, the z-axis, the y-axis, and the x-axis. This fixed support prevents this rod from translating in each of the directions, x, y, and z, so there will be reaction forces in each of those directions. That fixed support also prevents rotation about the z-axis as well as the x and y. So we will have reaction moments about each of those axes. 